Today we are thinking and reflecting on our higher self, our true self. Uh, and in that guise, let's open just by taking a moment to center on the thing that we all share, the thing uh, that's stable within our awareness rooted in compassion and love from divinity. Now just let your thoughts come and go. Don't follow them. Notice that, of course, they change all the time, but what doesn't change? Your ability to perceive, in fact, the fact that you are the watcher. Centering on that watchful state as we continue in a mode of uh, seeking to reconnect with the higher self within. It's interesting because I think sometimes when we talk about being unified with God, uh, people react kind of strongly, uh, especially coming from a Christian background. And yet there's so much from Christ about unity, about oneness. We have some of those readings in our written message today. I invite you to, to read those for yourself. Uh, so it's interesting to me that here Jesus is talking about oneness and complete unity. Uh, and when we talk about how we are one with God, um, a lot of us just react as if uh, that isn't the calling. Indeed, I think a lot of Christ's uh, visioning, Christ's words speak to the reality uh, that we are already unified deep within with God, but our outer selves, our outer minds are, are distracted from that. We don't know that entirely. And so he uplifts practices, uplifts different ideas, just like many Hindu uh, Nani's and Buddhist sages and, and Buddhas, actually, that we are one with God, with the unifying power with divinity. And so today we're going to brush the dust off of that realization within, helping it to come more fully into our awareness, into our being, and just letting go of all the other passing thoughts, at least not identifying so much with so many things that bring us out of the present moment, into our history, our past, into the future, uh, and distract us from the living God around and within us right now. Our first reading comes from Luke 9, 1 through 6. When Jesus had called the twelve together, he gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. He told them, take nothing for this journey, no staff, no bag, no bread, no money, no extra shirt. Whatever house you enter, stay there until you leave that town. If people do not welcome you, leave the, their town and shake the dust off your feet as a, test, as a testimony against them. So they set out and went from village to village, proclaiming the good news and healing people wherever, everywhere. Um, and then Mark 16, verse 15. He said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. These are divine gifts given to us from God. May she bless our reading and understanding of them. Yeah, I find our, our reading kind of interesting because it mentions driving out demons. And I think when we hear that, of course, we, our pop culture, you know, goggles come on. <laughs> and we 
imagine that to mean uh, helping people, you know, be exercised. And in a way, maybe that word could apply. But I think what we so often saw with Christ, yes, there was one clear demon possession that he helped with, but I think most of the demons he was help, helping to exercise, he was helping people let go of, were those that they identified with, those uh, things in their psyche that were weighing them down. We see it in different guises. Sometimes it was someone caught up uh, in how short they were. I wonder if you remember that story. Or their uh, fame, their wealth, uh, their lust, uh, power, and all those other distracting elements that we often yearn for, uh, that we follow after instead of following after divinity. And some people, when they ask us to follow after divinity, I think in a way, they're asking us to replace, um, you know, our, our certain demons for other demons because they're the gatekeepers. They tell us exactly uh, what to believe, and I, I know I, I share what I believe. Uh, but some folks make it uh, a little bit too hard set. They don't invite us into our own understanding of God. And I think that's our message today. It's to let go of the demons that we follow after in our psyche and to return and, and start to understand God within, come in contact with divinity within. So I am going to uplift some practices and ideas, uh, primarily coming from Christ, uh, that I think help with that. And I'll also point out that Christ's uh, conception of what we should follow, who we should follow, himself, divinity, had more to do with loving compassion, openness to other people, wise and healthy counsel, than it did getting his name exactly right. We see it in his tales about the Good Samaritan. Which one was good? It wasn't the person that followed Jesus exactly. It was the person that helped the injured on the side of the road. And so we hear in his openness for others and of sinners, of those outcasts from uh, the society of the time. Um, something about that divinity, I think, we'll start to discover with them. But it's up to us. Uh, so that invitation is important because I think often we're tasked with believing something from someone else, like me, <laughs> um, that we don't necessarily know for ourselves. And I think that's why we should know ourselves better, know our higher selves, know the core of our being better. And that involves listening to ourselves. So in a way, we do continue to listen to our thoughts, our feelings, some things that we might assume are connected to the demons to be let go, uh, but not following them as much, noting that often we have very little control over those demons, over our minds. You know, often when we identify with our anxiety, with our fears of the future, all the things that Christ asks us to let go of, they feel like us. We feel a sense of freedom in the midst of our fears of the future, our worries of the morrow is... Some translations say that Christ empowers us to not worry about it all. But because we identify with it, despite our fear, we, we feel like we're in the midst of some type of freedom. Well, in these meditative practices, in a prayerful mindset, we start to discover, no, we have very little control over that. But they're also not us. We don't have to center in our demons. And so allowing the truths within, that higher truth at the core of our hearts and spirits to illuminate our minds helps us to get to know both our lower self and finally get to know in an embodied fashion, in a feeling way, our higher self. So don't take my word for it. Take a few moments and meditate on higher self on divinity, the awareness within. Take a few moments out of your day 
consistently. And just watch your thoughts, but don't follow them. Let them slow, but don't force them into slowing. They'll naturally slow as you watch them because you're not running along with them. You know, often that thought comes up and we like to follow. Oh, that's an interesting thing. <laughs> oh, I don't like that thing. I'm going to follow it and, and fight it. Whatever it is, we tend to follow things that aren't Christ with him. And instead, finding that Prince of Peace at the core of our hearts, known by many names. Find that core of divinity is um, described by Hindu and Buddhist sages alike. Noting that that awareness, that watchful lens that we shine into our minds, we see what's happening in our minds. You know, sometimes we can kind of leave a trail of thought, and we notice it's still kind of continuing, but we're paying less attention. That watchful light, that awareness within, coming to get to know it and center on it, helps us to know that light from divinity, our higher selves. So let's do that right now. Just closing our eyes, if we can, we want to. Noting that in that awareness, we are one. We all share that seed of awareness. Letting all the things that fly through, that rack us, to just be. Could be my voice. Could be all the voices in our heads, different ideas. Just accepting that it's there but not empowering it. As we center on what's stable within, And returning to it throughout the week, no matter what we're doing. Turning to that light of God, that small, still voice from divinity within. It's interesting because Christ tasks his disciples to go forth into the world with nothing, it says. Not an extra tunic, not a walking staff. And it can seem like, well, that's something for them to do. <laughs> you know, a lot of us who take those ideas seriously, I think we sometimes make it hard on ourselves because we enter the world with literally nothing, but we haven't quite emptied ourselves within. So, you know, I think if we're not ready mentally and spiritually, we're, we shouldn't try to live up uh, fully to some of these ideas to just, you know, cast off our riches, give away our car and our house and start walking around knocking on people's doors as uh, it seems to be described in the scripture. 
No, I think it should start within. Um, and then maybe if, if you have that calling, once you're in that deep spiritual state, then go for it. So letting go of things within, casting out our demons, not following them, giving them away, so to speak. Although I don't think we want to pass on demons like we would riches. But letting go, centering on what's peaceful, I think is a good embodiment of this task given by God in the flesh to many. When we let go, when we stop following all our yearnings, our desires, our aversions and attachments, and center on a place of peace, then we can give away riches, so to speak, of ourselves, of our spirit. We can help empower people without that sense of agitation, of competitiveness. Indeed, we're told that as we center on this deep-seated awareness that we all share, all life shares, and perhaps the entire universe, we come to know the true unity in spirit, in God, known by many names. And as we get to know that unity, then sharing with others is sharing with ourselves. Loving others is loving ourselves. Loving our enemy is loving ourselves as well. Tears down our false conceptions of self, our limited selfishness and self-knowledge, and opens us up to the higher self, in our written message, I call it higher selfishness. <laughs> because truly, we're not tasked with not loving ourselves when we're asked to let go of selfishness. We're tasked with loving and getting to know our truer selves, our wider selves, our higher selves. These practices help because they open our minds to the reality found within. We don't have to take someone's word for it. As we discover, we're in a true oneness with all creation. We gain some distance from what we need a little distance from. Not just, you know, some troubles in, in the world, but our identification with our body and mind. Gain a little distance, not as obsessed. It's about as much us as, uh, you know, the tree outside, we're told. <laughs> kind of trippy, I know. But that distance, I think, helps allow us to, to manage things in a truer sense, to, to find God and give ourselves to God's will, letting go of worry and entering the moment in the unity of spirit. When we over-identify with our bodies and reputations, with our minds and all these yearnings, we become... Um, Anxious, we become limited in scope. Those are things we learn. It's funny how many things we learn as kids that we, we just assume is reality. You know, many of those things I think we can let go of and become more childlike, as Christ asked us to. More playful, more understanding that we can divide things in our descriptions, but we can't truly separate anything. As our favorite mystic Swedenborg described, we are all one and unseparable. The seeming space between us is a mirage. It's not true in the highest sense. Even in the afterlife where he describes hell as being a state of delusionment, being in love with hell. So it's a little different than some of our conceptions of hell. In the afterlife, he believed people who made hell loved hell. That's why they made it. That's why they continued to live there in seeming distance from heaven. And although he says there's a great divide, the divide is in the awareness of reality. Those in heaven know their unity with God. Those in hell are centered on delusion, falsity. All the other things we follow besides Christ within 
In heaven, he believed people of many different cultures, many different traditions, approached this truth in their own way. So it wasn't to stamp down on people's diversity. No, he believed many different religions, and even aliens, connected with divinity in their own healthy ways. And that their growth towards embodying that more fully was infinite because God is infinitely divine. Hell is a state of falsity. So that idea, that selfishness that centers hell, that makes it as uh, tough a place to live as we probably could imagine, is a delusion. It's delusional. So letting go of all the ways we divide things into separateness and to divisiveness, and centering on the unity of spirit that starts within, I think helps us to embody it outside. Hmm. So thank you for joining with me in our reflection today. I hope you got something out of it. If nothing else, just give it a try. Meditate, pray in a contemplative way consistently for a little while, just a minute or two. You got a free moment. Letting go of thought. Letting it quiet. And getting to know ourselves in every sense of the word. You may notice some things come up that you weren't quite aware of about yourself. You know, you may even have some strange dreams or something something from the past coming up. Just accept it. Maybe reflect on it a little bit. Come to know yourself. But let go of the reactiveness. Accept the reality of what's come. And center on the living God, the living self, in this very moment where it always is. Let us pray. Heavenly One, we come to you today seeking knowledge. Knowledge about ourselves. Knowledge about you. Help us to find our higher selves. To center on it. To center on the rootedness in spirit. The gifts at the core of our being. Sourced from you, we're told all from you. Help us to know our lower selves a little bit better instead of just centering on our embodiments and our uh, rambling minds. Help us to accept what comes, healing it in that acceptance, in that awareness of God as you have promised, and as you in power. Help us, O oh Lord, to give away everything as you tasked the rich man. To give away all the things that we hold on to in our minds that pull us away from you. Help us to do this in spirit, O oh Lord, so that we can better Uplift others in body as well. Help us to let go of our fears of the morrow, worrying about this or that. For me, it could be, you know, something about growing the church. It could be coming out of the pandemic. It could be anything, oh Lord, as you know. <laughs> Help us to let go of those yearnings. Help us to enter the moment as you tasked us with so clearly. Knowing that we have everything we need within. And helping us to get to know that self in the present moment. Instead of that self in the past. That idea for the future. What someone else thinks about us our own misguided idea about 
who we are in the body, in this world. Help us to get our, to know ourselves in the light of you, through your eyes, through your deep, compassionate love for us. Help us to know that love ourselves for ourselves in the highest sense and down to the details. To love all people, all things as a one in you. To love you, the only true reality we're told, the only thing that's real within and around us, beyond imagination and definition, and yet describable in your loving compassion and wisdom, your ability to uplift into useful, loving functions, and to be expressed in so many beautiful and wonderful things in this world, people, culture. Lord, today we pray for each other. Some of us have gone through surgeries, have lost a loved one, a pet as well. Oh Lord, help us to broaden our sense of self, to broaden our love and deepen them. Noting that it's okay to love ourselves, but let's love our whole selves, in the unity of this universe, of the cosmos. Let's love our neighbor as, as ourselves, our enemies as ourselves. Thank you, Lord, for those wise words. Get to the root of what we sometimes forget and become distracted from. Help us not to worry, oh God, the thing that you share the most in your Hebrew and Christian scriptures, not fearing, do not fear. Help us to fully accept it, to lean into those practices that you uplift, that empower it, that help to empower it in our current state. Finding that peaceful space within holds Eternity holds the light of God at the core of our awareness. Now let's take a moment to pray to you, O God, in silence. Asleep in the stable, box on the table, and tools at his ankles. Forged in the fire, letters and I.
took off her shoes for her and he braided her hair another day at the fair he watched her round ribs rise like a barrel of Hung up her saddle, finished the handle, blew out the candle. Asleep in the stable, wax on the table, and tools. the world. 